I didn't take you for a scholarly van. Oh, this? Well, it's Valisthea, a culinary pilgrimage. I borrowed it from old tomes. Seems there's no creature in the realm so foul it can't be cooked up into something delicious. <laughs> Think I'll stick to the unfoul ones, thanks. Oh, where's your sense of adventure, Sid? Honestly, one glance at these recipes, and even you would trade in your sword for a butcher's cleaver. From spit roasts to sweetmeats, this book has them all. Ah, <sighs> what I wouldn't give to bring these recipes to life. If it's my blessing you're hoping for, then by all means. Well, I'm no hunter, Sid. The first ton of worm I came across would be the death of me. But you're made of sternest stuff. Would you help me resurrect one of these recipes? Something tells me you won't be taking no for an answer. Fine, I'll help. Fantastic! Thank you. So, dare I ask what's on the menu? Uh, Chancer's Stew. It was once a favorite among the Gormans of Oriflam, if the author is to be believed. Though Molly's never heard of it. The only problem is that while the recipe is extremely detailed in most respects, it's infuriatingly cryptic as to the main ingredient. A beast, no doubt. Most likely something that would make easy work of a simple cook with more broth than brawn, but unwanted violets. I've no idea what they might be. Does the book say anything else? Well, only that the sweetest violets sprout atop the bed of roses. Roses? Rosaria, perhaps? One of the butchers in Martha's Rest might know something. I'll ask next time I'm there. It's being posted every day. Clive! Oh, am I glad to see you? Is something wrong? He's Blackthorn. He ain't himself. And if I'm honest, he ain't been for a while. Yet normally it only takes a couple of drinks to perk him back up, but not this time. Something's getting him down. And whatever it is, he ain't telling. It's like he's lost his spark, you know? He's barely got enough fire in his belly to get the ump about stuff. But I'm thinking he might if we both bent his ear, because he respects you, innit? So, what do you say? Fine. If you think it will help. I knew you'd understand. But if he doesn't want to talk, we let him be. He'll open up when he's ready. All right. Now, he'll only smell a rat if we both turn up at once. So, I'll go first, and you can meet us at the forge. Wait a bit, then head over when you're ready. Thank you for sticking with us. Those of us who are still here have to look after each other, don't we? So, welcome. Ah, welcome. Times may be hard, but if you got a gill, I got the goods. What can I do you for? Unwanted violets, if you have them. Though I'd gladly settle for learning what they are if you don't. <laughs> Boy, I haven't heard folk call them that since I was a lad. You're looking for scorpion tails. Unwanted violets is what folk used to call them back in the day. They turn a wicked purple when you boil them up. Hence the name. Used to chuck them in the pot when there weren't nothing else on offer. When there was a war on, that sort of thing. Thankfully, times aren't yet as hard as that. And even if they were, you wouldn't find anyone selling them these days. Do the scorpions still live nearby? I dare say they do. Great reads would be your best bet, memory serves. Thank you. You've been most helpful. Stay sharp. After what the Empire did to Martha, probably. Oi! You there! You handy with that sword of yours? Course you are. Bet you're a bloody marvel with the thing. Now, question is, are you willing to use it or not? 
Because a flock of noble chocobos are in need of help. Chocobos? You heard me right. Wild birds? Hmm? The big ones? And not just any chocobos at that. Whiteheart and her flock are the bravest birds you ever did see. They protect travelers round these parts from bandits and the like. Chocobos. Fighting bandits. It's true. Why, they saved me from a gang of footpads only yesterday. Nasty lot they were, too. And now, they're back, looking to settle the score. Oh, go on, then. D don't just stand there. Go and help them. <sighs> All right. There's a good lad. Where can I find these chocobos? I saw him cut across the way over yonder. The rotten scoundrels were driving the poor things towards the old dock. It's a dead end, that is. You save Whiteheart and her flock, you hear me? There ain't a pluckier bird in all the world. She's a hero to us locals. And don't worry, you'll know her when you see her right enough. I'm sure I will. And good luck to you. And give those no good bastards a hiding from me. Don't you go causing any trouble now. White Heart. That's quite a name for a chocobo. Feather. I thought Ambrosia was one of a kind. Speaking of brave birds. Looks like they went that way. These chocobos aren't going down without a fight. They're in trouble. You cornered feathers. You didn't think you'd seen the last of us, did you? You've been bad for business. But I reckon someone will pay good coin to mount your head on their wall. Not around here, they won't. Oh. And why's that, eh? Because she's something of a hero in these parts. You hurt her, and I hurt you. It's off. Or better still, how about we hurt you both? All right then. But don't say I didn't warn you. Stay down. Farewell. 
You're safe now. White heart, I presume. Do you know her, boy? <coughs> of a flock. Boy! He, he is it over! I thought I'd come and see how you were getting on. Oh, are you sort of the bastards then? I knew you would. <laughs> and the whole flock made it through unscathed. Thankfully they did. And not only that, I never stopped to think our hero here might once have been someone's mount. <laughs> Though I dare say she'd suit a fine fellow like yourself. Reckon our feathered friend must have learned a thing or two from her master. Kind-hearted warrior that you are. <laughs> Bird like her would have cost a princely sum. You born a lord or something? Well, I... Uh, <clears throat> Oh, no, sorry, sorry, I, I, I didn't mean to pry. Don't matter who you are, you done right by me. What is it, girl? She wants her master back, I reckon. <laughs> Told you, and it seems her pals agree. Is that it? You want to come with me? Well, bugger me if this ain't a heartwarming sight. The lads down the stables will be hearing about this tonight. Oh, stay right where you are. Doesn't she cut an handsome figure, eh? She does indeed. How much do I owe you? Ah, a few scraps of leather's the very least I owe, old Whiteheart. Oh, I'll be sad to see her go, of course. But she's earned her right to happiness and more besides. Don't you worry, we'll get along just fine without her. <laughs> you hear that, Whiteheart? You've earned yourself some time off. You have fun traveling with your master now. Hmm. You seem awful familiar now I get a proper look at you. That's it. When those chocobos swarmed my car on the road, didn't you? Uh... No. No, that can't be right. That fellow was a bearer. Must have been my double. No, oh, must have been, eh? <laughs> Oh, that'll be the excitement getting to me, silly sod that I am. Pay me no mind. <laughs> Anyhow, best be on my way. Good luck to the both of you. You take care of your flock for now. I'll call you when I need you.
scorpions. At least I know what I'm up against. Did you find our mystery ingredient? I did indeed. Marvelous! Let's see. <gasps> what am I supposed to do with this? It's poisonous, surely. You wouldn't be wrong. But that's your unwanted violet. Uh, into the pot it goes, I suppose. Uh, wait here. I won't be long. I present Chance's Stew, risen once again from the ashes of obscurity. Grab a spoon, Sid. Let's eat while it's hot. I'm, uh, not hungry. Well, it'll be too late once I've licked the bowl clean. Your loss. Salt on the senses, it's like choking on swamp water. And and yet, up through the pungency, there rise complex, meaty notes. It it takes a moment to recover from such an onslaught of flavours, but never have I tasted anything so fine. Thank you, Sid. Thank you. You're uh, welcome. I must share this gift. I won't rest until a steaming bowl of Chancer's stew sits before everyone in the hideaway. A single mouthful, and Molly will be breeding scorpions of her own. I'm sure she will. Back again, Lord Rosfield. I'm touched that you should find me such good company. <sighs> it is not your company, but your counsel 
that I seek on this occasion. Ah, oh, ever the charmer. What will it be today, then? The Iron Kingdom. I need to know what to expect. You'll soon be setting sail for Drake's breath, then, I take it. The Mother Crystal that rises from the boiling sea. There was a time when a true-blooded Rosarian had only to brave the waves to visit it. But then the Iron Blood made their move. As you know, the Iron Kingdom rules over the islands to the west of Storm. Or rather, its church does. But this is not the pragmatic approach to state religion employed by the Holy Empire to manipulate the masses. No, the Iron Kingdom is the literal embodiment of the crystalline orthodoxy. And so, if one is to understand it, one must start there. As the name implies, the orthodoxy holds the Mother Crystal sacred, and they do not take kindly to heathens plundering the objects of their worship for the means to fill wash tubs and light lamps with frivolous feats of magic. Indeed, the faithful consider ether a sinful thing, a poison no less. And to them, a dominant is an instrument of evil, albeit one they have proven only too happy to turn against their enemies. Some 80 years ago, in Northern Storm, Drake's eye collapsed. Soon after, in pursuit of Aether and with the Blight at their backs, the Northern Territories descended upon the Grand Duchy of Rosaria. And when the Shields of the Flame marched north to meet them, the Iron Kingdom spied an opportunity. A few short days later, the Crusaders landed on the island of Mount Drastanus, home of Drake's breath, and plucked it from the Duchy's grasp. Rosaria tried to reclaim it, of course, but to no avail. I doubt more than a handful of duchy men have set foot on its shores in your lifetime. Nor are they like to again, under the Empire's stewardship, meaning the Iron Blood will keep their island, and with it, the foothold they need to march on mainland soil when next they spy an opportunity. The Mother Crystal is both the object of the Iron Blood's worship and their gateway to the continent, making Drustinus the holiest of holy grounds, from which the Orthodox Crusade shall one day sail forth to claim the remaining Mother Crystals, or die trying. My father and my grandfather both traded blows with the Iron Blood for control of Drek's breath. Had things unfolded differently at Phoenix Gate, we would have sent our entire fleet against them. But instead, they sent their fleet against Rosaria. Sacked the capital. Killed the men. And captured the women, including Jill. I'd say you'd be forgiven for wanting a little revenge, Clive. My only aim is to destroy the Mother Crystal. But... Thank you all the same. Not much else to do here. Let's see if Jill's ready. It will be over soon. You ready? I think so. Jill. When you told me you had to come to terms with your past, you weren't talking about destroying Drake's breath, were you? No. I spoke of Imran, the leader of the Crystalline Orthodox, the man who made me do all those unspeakable things. I'm going to kill him. It's what I need to do to put the past behind me. What I need to move forward. And I know that I can do it. If you're there beside me. Always. And I'll be beside you, too. We'll bring down the Mother Crystal together. All while Sid looks on. 
will make him proud. Useful trick. Freezing and thawing the spray to make mist. How did you learn to use your powers like this? The Masters made me do it. When the Crusaders took to the seas. To keep the fleet's movements from prying eyes. <clears throat> I'm fine. No, you're not. This may be the only chance I get to go back. My only chance to put things right. I have to do this. Whatever the cost. All right. She is. The Iron Kingdom's mother crystal. Drake's breath. Strong currents, sharp rocks, and ether floods. Let's not forget them. This island is a natural fortress. But safety breeds complacency. Allowing a single rowing boat to slip in unseen. The sanctuary is inside the mountain. If we follow the old trail, we should be able to enter by the back gate. All right. Let's go. I always imagined when I came here, it would be to reclaim it. It used to belong to Rosaria, didn't it? Once, though it's been in the Ironblood's clutches for far too long. As was I. For 13 years, this rock was my home. I know its secrets only too well. This path was abandoned after an ether flood. They don't guard it. The perfect little shortcut. All the time. That wasn't even a bad one. It's nothing to worry about.
look at this place. What a mess. Wait.
press on? Yes. Inside the volcano. You get used to the heat, though I don't remember it being quite this hot. <laughs> <laughs> 